Shout out to Kansas City, man, KCMO. The whole Kansas City movement. Well, 1994 or 1993. 1993, I dropped an album called Players in the Game. I had my number on the back. Rich the Factor called me. I didn't know him. I never heard of him. I didn't know nobody in Kansas City. He called me and said he wanted me to produce an EP for him, and he had 6,000 or 6,500. And I said, come. So he got on the airplane, came to SFO Airport, San Francisco. I picked him up. I brought him back to Fillmore with me. Uh, I called Demo, Quinn, Seth. I called to everybody. Told him about this dude named Rich the Factor. This the first nigga I ever saw with diamonds in his teeth. And this is late 93, early 90, 94. And uh, he brought all the money. He gave me all the money up front. And I made his beats for him right there on the spot. I made six songs. The name of the project is called uh, Rich the Factor Getting the Grip. It featured me and the GLP. That gave him automatic solidification in the rap game uh, in our area, Bay Area. Uh, Funky Fat Graphics did the graphics. Shout out to Thomas and Tracy. And his style was different, but it was good enough. Rich the Factor took the project I showed him uh, City Hall Distribution. I showed him um, uh, SMG Music Group, E-40 Uncle, uh, St. Charles. I got him tied in so he can get the same distribution that we got. He went back to Kansas City and he started putting on, dropping. He got more albums probably than anybody I know. His name is Rich DeFactor. Proud of him, proud of everything he got done and that he's still doing. He's still dropping albums, still dropping um, uh, mixtapes or albums, compilations. He got his clothing line, got his website. So I'm proud of Rich the Factor, you know what I mean? He did his thing. And over the years, you know, he started working with Mac Dre, you know, working with Messy Marv, uh, Sebo. He started putting on, you know, he started doing his thing. So I want to shout him out. I know he got a lot of fans that be asking me about that. And now he's one of the, the biggest guys in uh, Kansas City right now. Shout out to Tech Nine and them too. Shout out to the 57th Street Road Dogs, all them guys I met out there. But Rich the Factor is a legend. Y'all should Google his name, check his music out. He definitely somebody. Yeah, he's definitely, he's somebody. And people that I work with and learn from me, they learn that they got to keep going. Once you got the ball, you can't take your foot off the gas. Uh, R.I.P. to his brother, Wee Wee. Blessings to the family. He lost his brother, Wee Wee, out there in them streets. And, uh, but he just never stopped though. He just continued to keep going, dropping product back to back to back to back. So I'm proud to know him. I'm proud to see what he turned out to be, man. You know, and another thing for the record, just cause I help somebody don't mean that I'm the reason of their success. I'm not. God blessed that man with his own vision. God blessed him with determination and talent. And he got himself there. Yeah, he got himself there. I didn't get him there. I just played a part in it. Anybody of any story that I'ma tell about people that I participated in they in their early days, you know, I'm not the reason of their success, man. God bless them them brothers with the success that they got. You know, I'm just a, a active participant. You know what I mean? It feel good to be part of the foundation of a lot of artists and where, where they at right now. But to God be all the glory. 
that's the only thing I can say. You know, God makes some people to help other people. And I'm one of them people. So if you got talent, and I know some of y'all been texting and calling, I haven't been able to return all the calls. But um, I will be trying to reach back out to you. I can't listen to everybody's song. I can't do business with everybody. If you spending money, then you will have my attention all the way. And that's what Rich the Factor did. He came with all his money and I did my job for the money that he paid me. So if you're an artist right now and you're looking for some marketing or some management, some promotions, or you have a business, tap in with me. But don't tap in with me and you just want me to do it for free because that don't make sense. I don't have time to do shit for free, even though I will do some shit for free. But don't start it off like that. Always have something to offer when you tapping in with a guy like me who might can help you. I'm not saying I can help you for sure, but I might can help you. Imagine that you don't have no buzz right now, but if you hire me to help you get a buzz, I use my social media. I use this channel called Traplix TV, and I start letting the world know about your shit. That's smart because you never know people listen to me if i promote you there's people that's gonna be looking to see if you if you good or not now i will not compromise my name to put with your name if your product is not that good money all money not good money so i won't mess up my good name promoting some garbage and i hope you're not garbage shout out to you two pick appreciate your love um there's a lot of people that's trying to get on right now you can't get on just by not doing nothing. You do have to ask for help. You do gotta reach out to people and let them hear your shit. That don't mean they gonna help you. But that's but you still have to pursue by trying. You still gotta try. So keep trying, my brothers and sisters out there with your businesses. Keep trying. Keep trying. Because that's the only way you're gonna make it. 30 years later, from 92, I'm still trying. I might be doing it in a different pace in a different type of race. Cause the marathon ain't to who could run the fastest. The marathon is who could last to the end. That's what a marathon is. That's what a marathon is. RIP to my brother Nipsey Hussle, man. That was his name of his movement, the marathon. Cause he knew already this shit ain't to no quick, this ain't no quick race stuff. You gotta keep going. It took him some years to get his deal finally the way he wanted. Then he got killed after that. But he got to see his dream come true. I know he didn't get to see it fulfilled all the way where he, where he was trying, but his last days was in success. So if nothing else, he was able to see what success looked like while he was alive. And that's a good lesson. You got to keep going to your very last day. You got to keep trying. You got to try your best to make it. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm still trying to make it, y'all. I haven't made it over the mountaintop yet. I haven't made it to the mountaintop yet. I'm on my way. That's the direction that I'm headed to that way. I appreciate your love, uh, Casanova Beats. What's happening, Casanova Beats? Y'all follow Casanova Beats right there, man. He might got some beats for y'all to change your life. He might got that one beat that'll change your life. Because that's what it start with, one song that, if you're a rapper or a producer, it take one song to change your life. So keep, keep pushing Casanova Beats. You just never know which beat will change your life. Which artist gonna rap on your beat to change your life? Cause that's how Zaytoven life got changed. So I see Gucci Man and Jeezy. A few days later they fell out, but shit, that song's still a hit song. So I see, and that's that's what changed his life. So look for yours. Guarantee it, you you have it. You have the beat but you gotta make it turn into what you want it to turn into. RIP tracks and millions, yes sir. You know what I mean? Yes sir. 
My Instagram is JT Bigger Figure 415. JT Bigger Figure dot 415. Follow me on Instagram, JT Bigger Figure dot 415. So I can check your page out, check you out. Hell yeah. Shout out to uh Prospect and 39th, man. What's happening? Everyday trader, man. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to uh What's the name of y'all barbecue out there that tastes so good? What's the name of that barbecue place? That Rista Factory used to always take us to, to some place that got some good ass barbecue. <laughs> Gates? Man, is they still around? Tell Gates and them I say what's happening, man. That shit is addictive. Them people put drugs in that food, man. They got some type of drug in their goddamn soon as you eat one piece, you want another piece. Then another piece. I'm like, man, what the fuck they put on this? They meat so tender and juicy with the little sauce on it. <laughs> Shout out to Gates. <laughs> I'll never forget them. I forgot their name. I'll never forget them people food called Gates Barbecue. I don't care what city you from or what state. If you eat that food, you will want to go back to the city to eat some more of that food. They call Gates. Gates Barbecue. God. I had to get, I had to talk about them for a few seconds. Gates Barbecue, please I, tell him I said keep going, man. <laughs> Shit, yeah, yeah. This in Kansas City, Kansas. No, what is it? Kansas City or Kansas City Mo? I know they be having beef out there talking about we from Kansas. We from Kansas City Mo. I think it's on the Kansas City Mo side. Yeah, I, I think it's on that side. I think they got a bridge or something that separate them. Which one is it? KCMO. Yes, they got the barbecue. They got the best barbecue probably in America. I know it's a lot of barbecue in the world. Ain't more barbecue than them though. True story. True story. True story. Yeah, true story. Shout out to that boy, Rich the Factor, though, man. Keep going, my guy. I just had to come back with this story because Kansas City is a lot of support for us. RIP Matt Dre. We lost Matt Dre out there. But I never lost the love for Kansas City, man. And Kansas. I never lost my love. They supported me. They bought my music. They helped make me an icon in the independent rap game. I think that's dope as fuck. And I think it's even doper that Rich Defector is like me out there. He's a tycoon, boy. <laughs> Shout out to the whales, man. You know, he the one promote that the orca whale shit. Shout out to Young Dolph. He promote the dolphins. Rich Defector, he promote, promote the, the orca whales. Shout out to them, man. But, uh, yeah, I just had to do this live uh, as promised. Uh, leave the comments. Leave me in the comments what other stories that I forgot to tell because I got people that want to know. The dopest part about this story shit that I like is that I don't have to make up nothing. I don't got to juice the story up and make it bigger than what it is. I just got to tell the story of how it happened. I see my views going up. I see my views going up uh, every day. Shout out to all my new subscribers that just found out who I am. I think that's pretty dope. I got new people that never even heard of me before. People, yeah, R.I.P. Fat Tone too, man. Lost his life over, over a sucker-ass nigga. Dick riding and trying to get stripes, you know. A man lost his life over another man trying to get stripes so he can get some money, but, that, but it backfired though. It backfired. Rule number one, don't never try to turn out to be a hit man for somebody without talking to the family first to see if you're gonna get paid for killing somebody but then you kill them and then ask for the money later 
and then don't get the money, and then you end up doing triple life. That wasn't smart at all, you know? But allegedly, somebody I know allegedly didn't, and they allegedly right now doing life. <laughs> See, I can't say he did it. I don't know if he did it or not. I know he in jail for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, this I'm just saying though. What is the risk factor story? Well, you gotta you gotta watch this live again so you can hear exactly what took place. Yeah, risk factor. Google him. He's a factor out of Kansas City. I put him in the game. When I put my name and this Filmo shit behind him, he had an automatic kickoff. Then he went back to Kansas City and got kicked off even more by his own people. Yeah, they kicked him off. Okay, so the dads and Snoop and all that, okay. Yeah, all right, I can get into the shit with Daz Dillinger also. I can do that. Yeah, if I could do that. Yeah, Mac Minister, man. Yeah. Mac Minister, man. That's what he... He should have stayed a minister. Yeah. If Mac Minister would have really been a Mac Minister... He got that from watching Minister Farrakhan. Yeah. Yep, he, he got that from watching Minister Farrakhan. He started getting knowledge from Minister Farrakhan. And then switched his name to Mac Minister. And the Mac God, he started calling them the, he started saying, instead of Allah, he say Mac God. Yeah, and the Mac God and the Mac Ten Commandments and all that. And that's when I, I think that's what took his ass up out of here. Took his ass smooth up out of here. Nigga, the Mac guy, nigga, ain't no such thing as no Mac guy. Nigga, what is you doing? You were tripping. You tripping, nigga. You tripping, tripping. Don't play with God's name, man. Don't do that. Hey, baby. Good morning. Some like him. How you doing? You over here watching them crazy cartoons? Yes, you are, baby. I, I, I hear it. Yeah, y'all yeah, need to clean up down there, too. Look like y'all had a little... Yeah, man, you know I'm at the house. Top of the morning. Top of the morning. Hey, Boom Boom. What you doing? Something like a mother, my love. Boom Boom, you acting up? Huh? Nah, you acting up. Don't be acting up early morning. Kansas City, no side. What's happening? Now, kids don't pick shit up. Do your kids pick up after they sell? I got some kids that don't pick up nothing, man. Damn. It's time to turn these TVs off. Yeah, so the Daz Dillinger, I'm gonna come back with the Daz Dillinger situation. Yeah, I know people been talking about that. What's up, Tony Rain? Blessings to you. Baton Rouge, what's happening? San Diego in the building, Missouri in the building. What's happening? Shout out to Scurry X. Nope, I never made music with him, but I definitely respect him and I liked him. He was motivation for us. A Scurry X. The Bay Area in the building, what's happening? Yeah. Okay. What was the Mac Dre fat tone? Oh, no, we're going to get into the Mac Dre shit. I think that's what I need to talk about. Yeah, the Mac Dre situation and what I found out about Jay Diggs and them. Cold game. What I heard from some horses' mouths in Crestside. Yeah, I'm going to have to give y'all that one right there. I'm, I think that should be the next one I do about Mac Dre, what I found out. Hell yeah, I found out some shit, man. I found out some shit. That's not good. It's not good. That shit started a big beef, but what? Nah, what you what you take? I know she want me to pick it up. I told her I would today. 
Well, she said she wanted it right now. I told her I'd get it today. Okay. Shout out to my mama. <laughs> mama Pearl. Shout out to Mama Pearl. Daddy. Yes. Could you have what? Is that going to school today or no? Oh, okay. Well, I like them salam. Give your sister some juice, please, huh? Go get it from your brother. What's up, Boom Boom? And get a little Boom Boom some, too. <laughs> Shout out to my, to my cheering. Matter of fact, let me get my shit. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm tap back in with y'all. So, uh, yeah, that Mac Drake shit, I might as well go on and give it to him. Uh, I'll go get it for her right now. Yeah, I'll go get it. Yeah, they, they want to hear about it. Shout out to London, man. London in the building. Yeah, Mac Drake people didn't do that to Fat Tone. Mac Minister didn't know Mac Dre. Mac Minister is in jail for Fat Tom. Yeah, Mac Minister, he's in jail for it. I don't know if he did it or not. I, I don't solve cases. I'm not here to solve no cases with my YouTube uh, stories. Anything I talk about is public record. Whatever is not public record it will not be incriminating anybody for any type of legal repercussions. Because what I don't do is I don't help solve cases. What I can say for a fact, the man that killed Mac Dre is dead. Yes, I can guarantee you that. And it wasn't Fat Tone. Nope, but we will go into details. <clears throat> we will go into details. Yes. Appreciate that one May Day. Much love to you and your family. Anybody who contributes to me, man, I appreciate it. These channels is for, for people to be able to contribute if they if they would like to. So uh, yeah, so. It was the KC promoter. Mm. Like I said, I, I'm not here to solve none of the cases. You know what I mean? But I could tell you that the person who did it, he not on this earth no more. He under the earth. I could tell you that much. I am Nigerian descent. If you Nigerian descent, then you know how to move to Africa because your Nigerians will teach you. If you from Nigeria, yeah. Uh -huh. Tupac stole your phones after you robbed them. <laughs> Nah, Thug Life stole my phones, but Tupac authorized it. Shout out to Tupac. Got me for two cell phones. Two burnout phones. Boy, I was mad in a motherfucker about that shit. Had to chalk it up as a man. Sometimes you gotta chalk shit up, man. You can't. Everything ain't gonna go the way you want it to go. And when it's time for you to get payback and somebody pay you back, it's up to them how they wanna pay you back. I would have rather got punched in my face and still had my two phones. But I didn't get punched in the face. Nigga, they just took the phones and laughed about it. <laughs> what you gonna do, nigga? You, you down here in LA by yourself, nigga. What you gonna do? <laughs> they just laughed. <laughs> Shout out to Tupac and the, the <laughs> Thug Life. Shout out to Mo Prime and Big Psych and them niggas. I don't know which one of them niggas did it, but one of them niggas got it. Them niggas split my two phones up 
and I had six months on them phone. They got six months of talking for free. I did not like that. That was not nice. Nigga, they took your phones, nigga. Where your phones at, Fig? Shit, them niggas got it. I don't know which one. They all over there smiling. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you gotta pay it back. Sometimes they get it in material possessions. Nigga, you didn't got your ass hit, boy. You just got your ass knocked off of that shit. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm, I, you know, I'm telling the truth. If it's anything that happened to me in this rap game where I took a loss, oh, I got to tell y'all the story about San Quentin and Messy Marv. Yeah, about my studio. When my studio got stole, I got to put that on. I got to. This the JT stories, man. JT, give us all the stories. Somebody told me, give us all the stories. We want all the stories. Man. We here for it. Shout out to my subscribers, man, that's tuned in to this, to this, to this, this storytelling series I got. Luckily for me, it is not no fake stories, because, you know, people know the truth. They'll bust your ass out. Nigga, JT, that didn't happen. You don't see nobody on none of my stories saying, oh, you lying, nigga. Not one of my stories that I told. Do you see comments saying, oh, that nigga capping, oh, that nigga lying? You might see some shit on there saying they don't like this or they don't like that, but you don't never see nobody say, oh, that nigga lying, bro, he a liar. Out of everything they say about me, they ain't never said, Oh, but that nigga's a liar. They might don't agree with what I did or how I turned out, but they don't never say, that nigga JT a liar, bro. That nigga capping. That nigga just making up shit. That nigga just amping himself up. Oh, Gucci Man, I got some Gucci Man stories. Now, I can't sugarcoat nothing, too. Remember, I'm telling on myself. How many niggas will tell you, nigga, they whole career in the 2000s, they don't buy real jewelry? I buy a replica. To, to the average nigga, that'd be something embarrassing. But to a guy like me, I'm not embarrassed. I'm proud. I'm proud to say, nigga, I bought houses and land, nigga, with my money instead of how much jewelry I bought. You got some niggas with AP watches right now for $45,000 and don't even own a house. You got some niggas with diamond teeth they spend $25,000 on and don't even own a house. I'm just saying. You got some niggas right now that got a $100,000 car, nigga, that they paying car notes on and they don't even own a house. You got some niggas with Lambo trucks, nigga, they put down 10,000 and they paying $3,500 a month to have a Lambo truck. Nigga, I wish I would be having a Lambo truck for $3,500 a month. Unless I'm finna blow that bitch up and get some car insurance money. There's no way, there's no way possible, nigga. That don't make no sense at all. But to the average guys in this world today, they just want to look good for the bitches right now. And they want to look good for their niggas, their homies. You know what I mean? Well, there's no need to bust whack out no more because he already busted out. <laughs> yeah, whack. I don't need to even talk about him no more, nigga. He is an agent of the government to keep some shit going, bro. The nigga got a pass to stay out of the jail system somehow, some way, whatever it is he got going on. I don't want no parts of that. <clears throat> nope, I don't want no parts. I'm not gonna be part of the the confusion. I don't even I don't even like all that shit. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't want my fame to come from arguing with no nigga. <clears throat> Damn. Allergies, boy. Snowy season. Snowy season allergies. Snowy season allergies. 
Yes, sir. Real estate before jewelry. Oh, man. Do you know how good it feel to own a piece of land with a deed? That shit feel pretty good, man. That shit feel pretty good. Have you ever owned a house outright and you got the deed to it? That shit feel better to me. No, no labels try to hire me as an a &R. That would be nice, but... Nope. I think I'm I think I'm I'm blessed and cursed at the same time. JT, why you blessed and cursed? In this rap game, I'm blessed because I'm independent and I know I gotta do it myself. I'm cursed because I don't have access to the bigger budgets and the bigger companies to do bigger things, so I'm just gotta do it independently. Yup. So that's being blessed and cursed. But I'd rather be blessed independently. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather be blessed independently. It's a, it's a longer process. It, it's harder to do. You got to come up with all the money for everything you're trying to do. You don't got no big A&Rs behind you, publicists, companies, all that. You got to build your own buzz. You got to do everything. You got to get out the mud. Nigga, I'm going to get out the mud, nigga, anyway. Look, I'm 48 years old. Nigga, I don't still supposed to be rapping this shit according to how old I am. Oh, you an old nigga. Ain't no nigga listening to that. That's the other old niggas. I'm a young old nigga because I know how to still be tapped in with the young generation. My swag ain't no old nigga swag. Except for this. I, see, I'm, a, I'm one of them niggas, man. I got on the same jeans. I gotta wash them too. Yeah, I'ma wear these jeans for about four, five days, then I wash them bitches. Maybe I'll wear them for a week. If they ain't dirty. I learned me some good game, nigga. I am not. I am not. Hey, good morning. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah, I, I, I learned some good game, man. It's a good game, nigga. I want to be independent, nigga. That means you got to have money. So you can't blow your money on stupid shit. You can't blow your money on stupid shit. Can't do it. You're going to be sad. It says, chip I think you took it out. Oh, okay. Let me do it again. Yep. You'll be sad when you had the money and you blew it on something stupid. And then when you really need the money for something important, that's when you feel stupid. You don't feel stupid while you buying a new chain, a new car, the new expensive clothes, going on trips and shit. You don't feel stupid, but you feel stupid though. When you, when you need to do something and you ain't got the money and you just had the money. Oh man. All right, you have a good one now. Damn, nigga, I just spent 10 bands. Nigga, I just had 10,000. What you did with it? Shit, nigga. Bought some clothes. Gave my partner, let him borrow 100. What's happening? What's the word, my G? Yes, sir, man. Much love to you, my G. Where you from? You from out here? Keep it going, my G. Salute. See that? They still know who I'm is. Did you see that? That nigga bounced out his car like, Fee, what's happening? Don't listen to these niggas when they be like, oh, Atlanta, hey, JT. You sound crazy. Nigga, I would not live in a state or a city where they hate me at. Who does that? Who does that? Do y'all remember all the shit they were saying? JT can't go to the Bay. He can't go to Frisco. He can't go to Atlanta. He can't go to Alabama. He can't go to New Orleans. I say, boy, a nigga go to Africa and they just have a field day with your name. Damn, I went to Africa, nigga. I turned into enemy number one. Oh, Curtis Snow ran you out of Atlanta. Man, I will beat the shit out of Curtis Snow with my hands, nigga. What the fuck? Ever since I've been gone, nigga, you don't see no activity from that nigga. 
What happened, Kurt? You was just a man. What happened? Since JT been gone, nigga, you ain't been buzzing at all. I got to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the Curtis Snow story, too. I'm going to come back with it. Are y'all beefing? Ain't no beef, nigga. How the fuck I'm beefing with a nigga that ain't even on my level, nigga? From the hands with the money, nigga, the status, nigga, the gangster shit, nigga. How, how you beefing with a nigga who just got a, a name, but I was out here going through it for real. My shit wasn't just no movie, nigga. Yeah, I do the movies, but I was living in it in real life. My shootouts was real. He didn't have no shootouts, nigga. Yeah, nigga. He didn't have no shootouts. Not one, nigga. Except when his house was getting shot up, nigga. And he had to move up out that bitch, nigga. That's another story, though. And I didn't do it. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm not a tough guy, nigga. I just stand on my principles as a man, nigga. When a nigga play with me, I got to play back. If I can't reach a nigga the way I want, I fall back and sit and lay low. You know what I mean? And just and just stay on what I'm on. Don't, don't let nothing, you know, throw me off. Try your best not to let a nigga throw you off. You still got to stay active. Man, y'all hit that like button, man. I see too many people in here. Is it 300 agents in here with, that's watching me right now? If you in here for this channel and you fuck with me, hit that like button right now. Yeah, I'm going to have to tell them, start telling them that. Now I'm doing my YouTube thing. They be like, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. Yeah, tap in with me. If you fuck with this channel, hit that like button, nigga. And if, if half the people on here not really here for me, I don't mind. That's cool. I'm still getting paid for you watching me anyway, so it don't matter. I'm getting paid, nigga. That's why y'all getting these stories, because I realize, nigga, my stories is making my money go up every every two days, nigga. I'm seeing a nice number going up. Every two days, nigga, the money going up, up, up. Like, yeah, okay, I like this shit, nigga. When niggas hit the like button, now I understand that make your video go a little further. Cool, but if you don't hit the like button, I'm going to get paid if you watch this motherfucker. And I'm okay with that. Yes, yeah, sir, I'm okay with that. Some people don't want you to make no money. Some people don't want you to go up. <laughs> don't never let that shit stop you, though. Yeah, don't let that shit stop you. You just keep going, man. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. So what story I'm coming back with next? Let me see. What's the story I need to come back with next? Let me see. Y'all tell me before I get off this live. What's the next story I need to come back with? What shit, yeah, the dad shit, the Mac Dre shit, the Gucci man shit, the Zaytoven shit, the Snoop Dogg shit, what? What's the most valuable story that I ain't told you? <laughs> okay, Mac Dre, okay, Messy Mar, Mac Dre, okay, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all, the mob figures, I don't got no mob figure story. Mac Dre. Okay, we're going to come back with the Mac Dre story. We're going to come back with the Mac Dre story. Yeah, I'm going to break down the whole story, nigga, from when he got out of jail. But I'm going to start it from when, when we jumped him in Frisco. I'm going to start the story right there. Or I'm going to start it from when I just was a, a fan of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too hard for the radio. Yeah, I'm gonna start it right there. Mac Dre, nigga, legend. IMP Coognut. What's up with Coognut, man? All the Coognut fans. Shout out to y'all out there. Gucci. Gucci man, Zaytoven. Okay. Snoop Dogg. I don't think the Snoop Dogg story too important right now. Yeah, I don't think that's that important right now. You know, Snoop is a mega star. Snoop probably the biggest rapper in the world. Yeah, he's a, he's the biggest rapper in the world. Dre Dog. Nah, we ain't got no good stories for Dre Dog, even though I got a story for the Dre Dog, but I. 
not really. He's not really. I don't got no hate for him or nothing, but I definitely got a story about some shit though. Some niggas I just ain't trying to promote. They say make reenact reenactments. Rich the factor trash to me. But Rich the Factor is a factor though. He lived up to his name. JT the bigger figure is a is a lame to some niggas, but I'm really the bigger figure though. My name fit me, nigga. JT the bigger figure. That nigga Fig is a factor, nigga. Fig is a He might not be what you like. That nigga important to the game though. That nigga part of the concrete of this fucking rap game that everybody's doing right now. I might not be the most popular. That's over. That's okay. Who is the most popular? Yup. Yup. I'm just saying to some people, nigga, I'm lame to them. You can't please everybody. And I don't be mad when people be like, oh, nigga, you ain't popping to me. I be like, I don't have to be popping to you. This game ain't based on you got to be popping to everybody. You just got to be popping to enough people that make you keep going. So I got enough people that actually love me for what I do and who I am. And that's what keep me going. If I didn't have that love, then why would I still want to be in this game? And it ain't no love for me. I'm in the game, nigga. I'm loved. And now I'm loved all around the world. That is a great part of my story right there. You know, JT got hoods in other parts of the world that love him. JT got whole cities of people that love him in other places. Now, that shit for real. That's why, that's why I tell y'all to travel, man. You can't be trapped in your own city, nigga, forever. You can't be trapped in your hood forever. At a certain point, you got to grow up out of your hood. At a certain point, if you just want bigger and better in life. Why you think Boosie ain't in, Bur in, in Baton Rouge, nigga, doing his thing? Why did Boosie move to Atlanta? So he could get the fuck away from his hood. So he could live his own life. Sometimes the hood be cursed, nigga, with all that fucking killings and all that shit. It come with a curse. You got to leave that shit while you got a chance. When you get a chance, you gotta leave, nigga. You can't stay in the same hood forever. I mean, you stay long as you want. Long as you happy there, shit, stay. But once you start seeing, though, that the, the hood got a curse on it, you got to leave that shit and come back and visit later. But, nigga, uh-uh. Don't nobody want to go out. The nigga then went out because he stayed in the hood too long. Stayed coming to his hood too much. R.I.P. Young Dolph. That's a great example, nigga, of what I'm speaking on. But Dolph was going to keep going whether he live or die. I seen a, a, a video about that. Where Dolph, he said, I like to be by myself, just like me. That nigga like to be by himself. He said he get more work done when he by himself. I feel the same way. I always was in the hood by myself. Can't do that though, Fig. You gotta be, you gotta have 24-7 security when you was in the hood. You got to have security, nigga. You have to protect yourself. And security don't mean you got a gun on you and that's why you safe. Nah, you gotta have somebody watching your back. You can't trust niggas. When you get access to these niggas, it's their choice if they gonna kill you or not. Not your choice. You gave up the power to them niggas as soon as you stood on the block with them niggas. You don't know which one of these niggas finna whip a gun out and blow your head off. Y'all just smoked the blunt, shooting dice, hanging out, and a nigga kill you right there, nigga. And all we can do is say shit, R.I.P. Damn, why you didn't watch his back? Why you didn't? It's too late. He should have been watching his own back, nigga, by having a nigga watching his back. That's the real reality. So if you see me with some niggas, I'm gonna make sure I try my best to have another nigga. That's there strictly to watch my back. I'm watching my back, but I got at least one more or two more niggas. They are strictly there to shoot that motherfucking gun, nigga, if it turn ugly, nigga. We shooting it out right here, right now. If I can't come like that, I don't need to be on no block. 
It's just not smart right now. That's not smart. Fig, what you going out there? Oh, hanging out, smoking blunts. Nah, I don't think you need to be hanging out, smoking blunts. Fig, you a little bit more valuable right now, my nigga. I know you a hood nigga. Y'all see my videos. Every hood that you see me in, you saw me by myself. You never saw me with no niggas. So I don't gotta prove I'm a tough guy. And I don't gotta prove I'm a real nigga. My videos tell you. Shit, somebody let you up in there, nigga. This nigga out there by himself, pocket full of money. Nigga taking care of the kids. Nigga looking out for the hood. That's why I videotape everything. I'ma show nigga that I love my motherfucking hoods no matter where you at. I don't care. I don't gotta be born there to love y'all. I don't gotta be, I don't gotta be. I don't gotta be a crip to love the crips. I don't gotta be a blood to love the bloods. I don't gotta be a Grape Street nigga to love my Grape Street niggas. I don't gotta be a Hoover to love the Hoovers, nigga. I don't gotta be a gangster disciple, nigga to love the gangsters disciples. I don't gotta be a BD to love the BDs. I don't gotta be a vice lord to love the vice lords, nigga. I don't gotta be a east side nigga to love east side niggas. I don't gotta be a west side nigga to love west side niggas. I don't have to. Or the north or the south. If your hood's struggling, nigga, if y'all been going through it, nigga, if y'all having challenges and shit i love y'all too because i want to help play a part in making it better nigga. even if it's for one day a few minutes if i could bring happiness to them kids nigga, while i'm there i like that type of shit. if i could help feed some of the mamas and babies nigga, and some of the niggas that's hungry i like that and then i get on i leave after that i'll be gone after that i don't be out there forever i just go to, to get something done and then i'm gone Shout out to the whole Alabama, man. Y'all see my work in Birmingham, nigga. East side, west side, nigga, north side. Yeah, Birmingham. The reason I done that, they asked me to come to their city. They said niggas don't show love in their city. I say, nigga, I like how y'all show me love. I, I, I owe this to y'all. I opened up that basketball gym. I paid for candy paint floor, nigga. You never saw a basketball gym with candy paint floor, nigga. I paid for that. And I left it for the community. They didn't keep it up though. They lost it. They end up losing the gym. They end up losing the community center. It wasn't my job to maintain it. I paid for it. I flipped it. I paid for the rent. I turned it over to some people and they just didn't care. So Birmingham, I love y'all. I tried my best, but niggas didn't do what they were supposed to do. I knew I wasn't gonna be there forever. So I did the best I could do while I was there. And that's what my videos reflect. Yes, got to have videos. Uh-oh, Quinn on dope. Saying Quinn tell you he on dope, he don't care. One thing I learned about San Quinn, he do not care about being on dope. And Curtis Snow. He don't care neither. What about you, JT? I care, nigga. Look at my face, nigga. Do I look like I'm on dope? You can't hide dope look. You can't hide a dope face. When you on dope, nigga, you can see it in the nigga face. You can see it in the nigga eyes. I had my days with drugs, nigga. And I don't like drugs more than being healthy and looking fresh, nigga. I like my teeth white. On drugs, your shit be brown and you don't care. Did you know that? You on all them drugs and shit, your teeth be brown and hella brown and shit. I'm like, nah, let me get my teeth fixed, nigga, and let me keep my shit clean. Yeah, buddy, cause boy, then your face start getting sucked in. Y'all remember my face used to be sucked in? I was on all them pills, nigga. Percocets, Molly, ecstasy, nigga. Drinking alcohol all day, nigga. I used to drink a whole bottle of Ciroc, nigga, like it wasn't nothing, nigga. I cannot drink a bottle of Ciroc right now like that if I wanted to. But when you on them Percocets and shit, you could take another drink and another drink and another drink. Next thing you know, you didn't even eat no food today. Next thing you know, nigga, your weight going down. Next thing you know, your face started looking like a skeleton, nigga. Big, what you on? <laughs> nigga, next thing you... Shit, nigga, I'm on it. I don't care. 
That's what happens when you don't care, nigga. You be like, I don't care, nigga. But I care, though. Shout out to Africa. Yep, Africa helped me to be like, nigga, get on your health shit. Shout out to the Africans. Like, JT, drink this garlic tea. Drink this this uh, this ginger, ginger uh, JT. JT, eat these carrots and these, these goddamn tomatoes and onions. They all organic. It's going to help you with your health. JT, eat this fish and this lamb and this goat. Organic. It ain't nothing on our meat, JT. Eat this. JT, eat some of this chapati bread, man. Yeah, that's some that's some bread in Kenya. Eat some of this corn, JT. Next thing you know, I start getting healthy. I said, I'll be damned to get healthy in Africa, come back to America. Now I'm back drugged up, high all the time, geeked up. Fuck all that. That's why y'all don't see me on here geeked up and shit. The fuck I'm geeked up for? When you in the beef in the streets, though, drugs, nigga, help calm your ass down sometime, nigga. When you on the, when you on, when you, when you on the block, nigga, them Percocets make your eyes be like this, nigga. You on every car, nigga. We on every car, nigga. I ain't letting no car slide up on me. You geeked up, nigga. I'm watching every car. Every nigga with their hands in their pocket. Boy, you better take your hands out your pocket walking up on me, nigga. Everybody's an op potentially until you prove that you're not the enemy, nigga. That's, that's. That's the street light. That's where them drugs come in at. You watching everything, everybody, nigga. Everybody could get shot today, nigga. Nigga, what you doing walking right here? How you think you can stay up two, three days and stay up all night, nigga? I'll be standing by my door with my gun, nigga. Sitting in my car in front of my house on geeked up. Chop on my lap, nigga. Going to the gas station, chopping, nigga. Uh, Glock in my pocket. All these guns, nigga, they might be stolen anything. Nigga, you got stolen guns, you high. I'm smoking blunts in the car. I'm smoking cigars, nigga. I'm watching that. That's that shit right there, nigga. That's that. That's the, that's the life of a street nigga. A nigga don't want to be on drugs. It's to be on drugs. Nigga, them drugs will keep your ass up two, three days in a row, and you on your shit. This war shit, nigga. What you think my father and them was taking in Vietnam? Nigga, hair rhyme. Poppy seeds, nigga, my father and them, and everybody in his platoon, nigga, my father told me, he say, son, these drugs keep you up all night, keep you going. In Vietnam, we might be walking and a nigga blow itself up. We might be walking, they come out of spider hole, boy. We on anything moving, nigga, we hear a, 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 a branch break in the bushes, we spray the whole bushes down. Because everybody was scared to die. This a war, nigga, so that same thing I understood. Why cocaine, nigga, cocaine, nigga, will keep a nigga ass up. Cocaine will have you, nigga, zoomed in on hella shit. Some cocaine mixed with some Molly and some Percocets. Now your ass even more zoomed in on shit. But you tearing your body up, though. You, you a good shooter. Yeah, you a good gang member, a street nigga, all that. And you a run from the police on hella cocaine. You ain't stopping. Nigga, I take some toots, nigga, a few pills. I don't give a fuck about no police. Nigga, it's all gas, no brakes. Nigga, I don't give a shit if it's Sunday, Monday, broad daylight, midnight. Nigga, I am not pulling over for the police. Nigga, that's what you tell yourself on them pills. Because you going to jail. You want to go to jail, be high? Nope, I'm going on a high-speed chase, nigga. I'm running red lights, nigga. I'm, going, I'm doing anything to get away. That shit is not good. So I just said all that to say I'm thankful that I got that part of that shit out of my system. You know what I mean? I got that part out of my system right now. That reckless part. The reckless part where you don't care. All you care about is yourself, nigga. Imagine driving through a red light, nigga, and you could hit a, a, a car with a mom and her kids in the car and kill all, everybody in the car, but all you care about is getting away from the police. That's the true story to this shit. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me not to kill nobody on my high-speed chases. Trying to get away. Running through red lights and shit. Just only got lucky, nigga didn't crash. I didn't kill nobody. I hope y'all heard me on that. 
Yeah, I hope y'all heard that. I hope you heard me on that. Don't kill nobody trying to get away, man. I understand, though, how I go. You know, we could just hope everything work out. But if you try to stop doing shit where you got to go on a high-speed chase, then you could better your chances. And drunk driving, man, cut that drunk driving shit out. That drunk driving shit killing people out here for real, for real. Innocent people, too, nigga. You wake up in the fucking county jail, nigga, and like, what happened? Man, you had an accident. You killed some people. What? You know how I many niggas woke up in the county jail and got the news they just killed somebody? And pills make you blank out, nigga. Cocaine and alcohol make your ass blank out. True story. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. It's ugly out here, man. It's ugly. So yeah, I'm gonna come back with the next lie though, man. We're gonna do the Mac Dre shit. We're gonna go over this Mac Dre shit. The people wanna know what happened to Mac Dre. People wanna know why Jay Diggs and them nigga is running with the Mac Dre D shit, but ain't feeding Mac Dre daughter though. Yeah, Mac Dre got a daughter, nigga, that's out there fucked up right now. Broke as fuck on dope, then pimped by all them different niggas. Yeah, we're gonna go into that. Yeah, because they contacted me. Yeah, and Mac Dre friend, his best friend was a white boy. His best friend wasn't none of them niggas that you see running his company right now or promoting him. That did shit. Yeah, none of them was his best friend. All of them niggas took advantage after he died. Niggas he had fights with and fell out with. But if you listen to them right now, they'll say, God damn it. Mac Dre was their real friend, their best friend, and all this old shit. Lies, 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 lies. But we gonna go into that. So much love to the people, man. Tap in. I'll be back in a few minutes. In just a few minutes, we gonna get back on this live, man. This is storytelling time, nigga. This is like HBO Showtime, nigga. When you watch my channel. Yup, JT a real historian, nigga, cause I lived through it. I was there. Yeah, the first person Mac Dre saw when he got out of jail was JT the bigger figure. And we're going to get into that. Yeah, salute to the streets.